Good morning everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with Father Warner. Today is Friday, we are in the 15th week in ordinary time. Our text today is taken from Matthew chapter 12 verse 1 to 8. Please open your Bibles, Matthew chapter 12, 1 to 8. And I've entitled today's teaching, Cornfield Controversies. So let's read the text. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and they began to pluck herds, heads of grain and to eat. When the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. And he said to them, He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence which was not lawful for him or his companions to eat, but only for the priests. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple break the Sabbath and yet they are guiltless? I tell you solemnly, something greater than the temple is here. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the relationship between Jesus and the Pharisees today reaches a flashpoint, especially when we read chapter 12. So much so that by verse 14, when you will you will realize, if you look right now in verse 14, they have made up their minds, but the Pharisees went out and conspired against him how to destroy him. Now, Jesus had no axe to grind against the Pharisees. He just came so that all would do the will of his Father in heaven. We read that uh, very clearly in uh, verse, uh, later on in one of the verses, I forget which one, but it is there that he has come very clearly to lead us to the Father. And that included the Pharisees. He wanted even the Pharisees to be led to the Father. Somehow, the Pharisees saw his presence as a threat to their beliefs and to their way of life. Now, Jesus saw their practice of the faith, as we have done it already, as a yoke, remember yesterday's teaching, as a yoke that was enslaving people. That's why he says, my yoke is easy because the yoke that you put on, remember I told you this, that for the Jews, they saw the law as a yoke. And Jesus says, my yoke is easy. Now, Jesus was not anti-Torah or anti-Sabbath or anti-Pharisee or in fact, the minute we oppose something, then they call us anti. We are not anti, we are not anti, we are nothing. Jesus challenged the interpretations of the Sabbath when it evolved into nothing more than, listen to this, and I picked this up from the Jerome's biblical commentary, it evolved into nothing more. The Lord became nothing more than mountains hanging by a hair, mountains hanging by a hair. Because by the time the Pharisees were done with the law, there was very little scripture and more rules. And sometimes I dare say that we are becoming that kind of church. Very little following of God's word and more of our own local rules and regulations, which I don't know whether our Lord would approve of. Remember, our Lord gave us, if there is a rule or a law, one big rule, a new commandment I give unto you, love. As one commentator once said many years ago, Jesus gave us one commandment to love and everything else that he said was a commentary on that one commandment. It's a commentary. So let's not burden people with laws and rules without consulting what our Lord has to say to us. What is, what is the word of God teaching us? Otherwise, we will go far from the law of love and embrace the law of rules and regulations. Now, ironically, the Old Testament, especially the first five books of the law, has just one thing to say about the Sabbath when you read, because this is a contra controversy that took place on the Sabbath. We see that in verse 2. The 
Old Testament had only this Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 to 11 says keep the Sabbath holy this is in our Ten Commandments keep the Sabbath holy this is the only thing that you will find in the Old Testament as a regulation with regard to the Sabbath keep it holy now the rabbis seemed unhappy with such a basic law or so it seemed they seemed very unhappy and therefore in the course of time they found it necessary to specify and listen to this 39 actions as forbidden on the Sabbath God gave us one single one keep the Sabbath holy and then they added 39 prohibitions amongst them was the law that you could not reap you could not winnow you could not thresh you could not prepare a meal but remember that every law has an exception and this was no difficult different humanitarian grounds exempted one from these actions on the Sabbath saving a life took precedence over keeping the law and dare I say this if somebody says please help me to go to the hospital and you say well I'm going to church because it's a Sunday and I have to keep the law you just broke the law of God you just broke it because preserving a life is far more than your presence in a church don't misunderstand me I didn't say don't go to church because some of you might be gleefully saying oh father said not to go to church I said if somebody is dying your duty is to that person first now the narrative in today's gospel as I have said earlier in verse 2 takes place on the Sabbath Jesus and his disciples walk down a very thin narrow strip uh, between the cornfields now these narrow strips between the cornfields were considered by the people at that time as a right of way which means that anybody even if it was your private property as long as these narrow gullies were there you had a right of way and it is here that this Sabbath hunger as it were the the hunger pangs kick in and it is here that this controversy takes place in one of these narrow uh, little by lanes between the cornfields now for the record it was the disciples who picked the corn and ate it not Jesus let's keep that in mind yet um, these nitpicking uh, Pharisees or should I call them corn picking Pharisees don't correct the disciples they don't have the courage and this is what most people do yeah they didn't have the courage uh, to correct the disciples they find fault with Jesus your disciples are breaking the law in reality the disciples actually broke no law remember the exception made on humanitarian grounds that I spoke to you that comes into play now the disciples were hungry and that was humanitarian ground enough to break the law now to the modern mind perhaps the act of walking through somebody's cornfield and plucking corn without the owner's permission seems like really the bigger crime it seems like theft so we need to explain this one the laws of the Old Testament were laid down with great sensitivity for the good of humankind unlike the laws very often today at least the laws today are on paper in reality it's another thing unfortunately humankind interpreted God's laws by their own understanding so there was no crime of stealing that could stick to the disciples because the law at that time permitted the hungry traveler to pick grains to eat so long as they did it with their hands and not with a sickle if you did it with a sickle it was theft if you just broke and ate what you needed that was permitted in those days in brief if you're hungry eat and don't starve that was what the law was now Jesus uses the law to justify the actions of his disciples he quotes David and his hungry men who ate the bread meant for the priests permitted again on humanitarian grounds he cites the examples of the priest who performed double duty on the Sabbath for on this day the offerings obviously double there was more work to do most of all he reflects the mind of God through the words of the prophet Hosea when he says I am a God who desires mercy not just sacrifice is your life full of sacrifice offering everything else and not one of mercy Pope Francis gave us that beautiful year of mercy to remind us of our Christian calling to love to be kind to be merciful now if the Pharisees wanted to pick a real fight they ought to have done better than just starting as I would call it a cornfield controversy but as we will go on to see they're going to pick on many many fights and these little fights 
will take our Lord to his cross. Does Jesus run away from the battlefield because somebody else is unethical in their behavior? The answer is no. He confronts his accusers. I want to say this with great love. Very often our adversaries are powerful people. They are people who wish to bring you down or sometimes they are just mean people. Whenever you are faced with tough adversaries, go to the Lord. Just go to Him in prayer. And what you can't do by fighting back, our Lord does through His angels. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord our God, today we know how you were attacked. Attacked for no wrong that you did. The Pharisees just wanted to pick faults with you. They attack your disciples and complain to you as if to say you are a bad master. You are a bad teacher. You are a bad rabbi. Lord, in our lives we have experienced people who have attacked us, criticized us, pulled us down. And very often, Lord, we have done only good. But today, you teach us not to respond in anger. You responded to the Pharisees by clearly explaining where you come from. They should have known the law, but you decided to teach them and remind them of the law once again. You did it ever so gently, ever so kindly. And even then, today, scripture tells us that they went out and plotted how to destroy you. Lord, forgive me also if I in any way have been a Pharisee, where I have decided to bring somebody else down. When I have attacked somebody wrongly, when I've been part of the majority in persecuting the minority. Lord, many of us have been on both sides of today's gospel. At some times we have been the Pharisees and at some times we have stood in your place being attacked by others. So purify our hearts, Lord. Purify our minds that we may walk in your ways, walk in your footsteps. Today I want to pray for all those who are going through court cases, who for no fault of theirs have been hauled before the court, for people who have been cheated of their property, cheated of their rightful inheritance, cheated of their livelihood, and are battling it out in our courts, running after lawyers, running after judges, running after justice. I want to thank you, good Lord Jesus, for all the good lawyers that we have in our country and to purify the hearts of those who have strayed away from this noble profession. I ask that you touch the lives of all those in the legal system so that they may follow principally your law, natural law, God's law, and then the law of the land, dispensing it in honesty, dispensing it with integrity. I pray for all our judges, our lawyers, our legal assistants, so that they may keep the poor ever in mind they may keep the helpless widow ever in mind. They may fight for the rights of children and those who are rejected. Bless all our online viewers, Lord, as we surrender this day to your divine presence. The Lord be with you. 
and may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Uh, please don't forget to um, like this video, share it with your friends. And if you know somebody who's really going through a tough legal system, um, a, a tough legal court case, especially somebody who's been deprived of their rights, I have been there. I, I know what my family has gone through. I never wish that for anybody. And I, um, I think a good thing you can do is call them up and be supportive. God bless you all.